This video is brought to you by Dev Mountain, a coding bootcamp that offers in-person and online courses in a variety of subjects, including web development, iOS development, user experience design, software quality assurance, and Salesforce development. For more information, consult the link in the description below. Continuing on with the previous one, where we shared how to install the sklearn module, in addition to playing with the Iris dataset that we loaded in from sklearn. So we gave a little bit of context as to what that dataset was all about, we explored it a little bit with respect to the textual representation of that data when it comes to loading it as a Python dictionary. And in this video, what we're gonna be doing is kind of continuing that analysis, but making it more graphical. And with specifically, we're gonna be taking a look at how to translate a lot of that into plots and graphs that we might be able to derive some insights about. And this is going to kind of be a necessary step anytime you're playing with a data set and you want to develop a bit of intuition as to how that data set behaves. And it will kind of guide the course as to how uh, most effectively to apply a machine learning model to the data set to you know, get it to, in this case, classify uh, an instance of a sample correctly. So this is kind of the intermediate step that you might take to learning a little bit more about what that data set is telling you so you can have pick an effective model to use. So what we're going to be doing is plotting primarily in this video and the module that we're going to be making use of is the module called matplotlib. Uh, so if you're not familiar with matplotlib, it is a very standard plotting library in Python. And what we're going to do is we're going to import that by saying uh, import matplotlib dot pyplot uh, as plt. So the IntelliSense here is a little bit slow. Sometimes it's kind of lags a little bit for whatever reason, just because of the Vim plugin that I'm using. Uh, it's usually pretty good, but for whatever reason, it seems to be kind of sticking right now. So right now we're just going to import this uh, matplotlib.pyplot as plt. This is just going to be a shorthand for us to refer to the functionality that's found in pyplot part of matplotlib. So that way we can access the, um, in this case, the scatter plot functionality, which will allow us to scatter plot some of the data that we have from the iris data set plotlib installed what you can do is you can open up a terminal and you can install it so i'm just going to open up a terminal via vim i'm just going to say pip install matplotlib so i already have this installed on my machine so when i see this i'm just going to see a bunch of requirement already satisfied if you don't you'll see it installed on your machine and you should be good to go so just like we had from last video, we've imported the load iris portion of the data set from sklearn. We've loaded that and stored it into a, a variable, an object called iris, which we're going to be making use of. And the thing that we're going to be plotting specifically are the features. So again, these are the sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width uh, attributes of the data that we're given. These are the features. And we, we, what we want to do is we want to create some plots to see how these features are interrelated based on the species that they happen to uh, confirm find themselves to. So if one of the species happens to have longer petals than the other, this is sort of an interesting attribute of that data that's going to help us in determining that essentially a species with longer petals might be of this class more um, more likely to be part of this class than any of the other two classes, for instance. So we're going to be plotting these interrelationships using some scatter plots. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to first try to extract the features portion of that data set uh, into something that we can actually play with. So what I'm going to do is, if you recall from the previous video, is that the data key of the uh, iris data set corresponds to all of the data. So for instance, if I say print iris.data, this is going to correspond to uh, an array that has rows where each of the rows corresponds to the information, the feature data for a given sample. So I'm just going to go ahead and write that and then uh, run it. So I'm just going to say python part2.py, which is the name of this file. And again, this is just a list of rows that correspond to each one of the samples that are part of this data set. So what I want to do is I want to, in this case, take the transpose of that data. And in doing so, what this is going to allow me to do, it's going to split the data set into four distinct arrays. And specifically, each of these four distinct arrays are going to be um, an array that's entirely dedicated to all of the sepal length, all of the sepal width, all of the petal length, and all of the petal width. So let me just go ahead and kind of show you uh, what that's going to give us because I think it's a little bit easier to show rather than to explain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, as I said, take the transpose of this data. And if I do that with this dot T operator, this is going to take the data set, take a transpose on that, uh, which is a matrix operation. And then this is going to be kind of our distinct list of lists that's going to contain different um, the different features. So I'm going to write this, I'm going to run it, show you exactly what I mean. So if I print out the result of this, what I have is I have a list of lists where each of the sublists, each of these four sublists are uh, 
essentially arrays or lists that correspond to either sepal length. This first one corresponds to all of the sepal length entries. This next one corresponds to all of the uh, sepal width entries. This one corresponds to all of the petal length entries, and this one corresponds to all of the petal width entries. So I essentially have a list of lists where each of these corresponds to one of the unique features that are part of our data set. And what we're gonna be doing is sort of storing these in variables and then plotting these uh, sets of data against one another to kind of get a sense of how these things are interrelated. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and instead of printing this out to the screen, I'm going to store this into a variable, which I'm going to call features. So this is just an object that's going to store that list of lists. And so for instance, if I say print uh, features of zero, this is going to give me the first component of that list of lists, which in this case is just a list of all of the uh, sepal length data that we have in our data set. So just to make this a little bit easier when we're actually generating our plots, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable which is called sepal lengths or let's just call it sepal length, and this is just going to be equal to features of zero. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of that extra parenthesis, and we're gonna have three other ones which are gonna be relatively similar. So we also want to have one for sepal width, we wanna have one for pedal length as well, so pedal length, and then we wanna have one for pedal width. So these are going to be four distinct uh, lists that are going to contain the features of our data set. So this is one, this is two, and then this is three. So these are four distinct lists that contain all of the unique uh, components of each of these features. So likewise, what I also wanna do is I want to store the label or the feature name of a given uh, data set. And that's mostly because it's just going to be a shorthand that's going to allow us to easily refer to that when we actually plot. So if we plot something and we want to label the x-axis and y-axis, we can very quickly refer to these things based on the variables that we're going to create um, based on the feature names. So for instance, recall that the Iris dataset dictionary structure also had a key called feature underscore names. So if we print this out, if I go back here and say print iris.featureNames, this is going to give me all the values of that specific key. So all of the values corresponds to, it's a list where we have the length, the width, the length, the width for pedal. So what I want to do is I want to just extract each of those components and store each one of those into a variable. So for instance, what I want to do is I want to say, let's just get rid of this print statement. We'll say sepal length, let's call it label, is equal to iris feature names of zero. So that's going to give us the first component of that value, which is a list. And that's going to be, sorry, the first, um, I, the feature names is a list and we're extracting the first component of that list, which is the label sepal length. So we wanna do a very similar thing for the remaining three as well. We want to capture the label for the sepal width. We wanna do the same thing for the pedal length and then also finally for the pedal width as well. So I'll just go ahead and get rid of that and just make sure that these are appropriately numbered. So we have zero, one, two, and three. So again, if I just print out sepal length label, what we should have is we should have the first component of that value array, which is sepal length in centimeters. So I'm just gonna get rid of that print statement. So now we've kind of got what we need uh, to plot. We've got the each of the components, each of the features stored in a nice variable, and we want to kind of plot each one of those against each other. And what we're going to do is we're going to make use of a scatter plot. So what we can use is the matplotlib's uh, scatter function, which is going to allow us to create a scatter plot where the first component of what we feed into this function is along the x-axis and the second is the y-axis. So we're plotting, let's just say, sepal length against sepal width. Let's just say how uh, we wanna see how those two relate and we wanna see how they relate with respect to the uh, target value. So again, this is the uh, species of iris that these happen to be. So how do these two things relate with respect to this particular uh, target? So we can also make use of our labels that we've created up above to say plt.xlabel, and this is going to allow us to give the x uh, axis a label. And in this case, we're plotting the sepal length against the sepal width. So we'll do plt.xlabel and ylabel with respect to the appropriate labels. So the other one is sepal width label. And of course, you would just change these based on whatever you happen to be plotting against. And then what we can do, finally, once we've created kind of our plot object, we can do plt.show, and this is just going to go ahead and display the plot that we've created. So we'll go ahead and write this, I'll clear the terminal, and then we can just go ahead and say python part2.py. Uh, we'll run that, and we should see something pop up. Uh, so let's just see here. So right here, I've got this plot that was generated, and we have um, each of these uh, things being plotted here. So uh, I don't exactly know which one, which these uh, colors correspond to, but I think it's easy enough to either set the color. So you can set the color for each of the um, 
targets that are being plotted here. So this purple one corresponds to a given target. This green one corresponds to another target. So one of the other species. And finally, this yellow one corresponds to the third target. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure if this is Setosa, Virginica, or Versicolor, but you can set the colors so that way um, each of the colors that are presented here are going to correspond to a species that you want to represent. So I think there's just kind of a default list of colors that's just um, <clears throat> given by default. But this is really, I guess, the key takeaway here is it's showing you how to plot each of these, um, where each of these things fall based on the target. So based on the species that they happen to be with respect to the two features, length and width with respect to the, the sepal in this case. So you can plot all sorts of things. And in fact, if we go to the uh, page that we saw before, let me just pull that back up. So if we go to the data set, so this is from the first video, uh, we went over the Wikipedia page that kind of went over this, and there's all sorts of uh, different types of scatter plots where this uh, particular image, somebody already went through the trouble of kind of producing each one of these unique scatter plots where they're plotting some attribute against another one. So for instance, sepal length and sepal width is going to give you this, this plot up here. So sepal width, sepal length, and it's going to uh, kind of generate something that looks like that, or uh, rather uh, like this right here. So this this one on the left over here uh, agrees very much with the plot that we generated as well. So it looks very much like the plot that we had there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and close that out, go back to the code, um, and basically just kind of uh, give you the tools to continue to generate plots. Now there's, there's a way in which you can generate a whole set of plots, kind of like the way in which it was on the Wikipedia page where you can kind of, um, you know, create a three by three grid where each one of those components is an individual scatter plot based on some features. That's getting a little bit fancy. It's not really uh, necessary to showcase. If, you, if you're curious about how to do something a little bit more sophisticated like that in Matplotlib, it's definitely not hard to do. Uh, it just really takes consulting the documentation and just kind of seeing how to, how to do that. And the Iris data set is also quite a popular one where you can uh, very easily find other examples uh, of code that exists, especially in Python, where people have played with this stuff, created some plots, and one of the best things that I think that you can do is um, kind of mimic, uh, borrow from other blog posts, YouTube videos, or what have you, where people have already analyzed this stuff and kind of given you the tools to showcase how do you represent this stuff visually. And there's a lot of really killer stuff out there that's really, um, you know, cool that might kind of inspire you to take something like this and to kind of generate your own plot. And once you kind of figure out how it works based on some examples, you know, you can kind of tweak it and make it your own and, um, you know, utilize it for future projects. So I just wanted to showcase, you know, kind of a very simple way in which you can plot these different features. And again, it's, it's pretty easy to take this and kind of run with it, plot these different features against one another and kind of see how they're interrelated. So you can continue to do this and notice some patterns. And we're not going to sit here and, and, and do that. It's more about kind of giving you the uh, toolbox to do it on your own. Um, what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to try to extract a bit more insight based on the plots that we might generate and then make use specifically what we're going to focus on is how to make use of a given model in sklearn, namely the uh, the nearest neighbor model, which is going to allow us to take the data set that we have from sklearn and actually build a machine learning model, or I should say leverage a machine learning model that's been provided to us by sklearn and allow us to, given a sample that we have not seen before, classify which one of the uh, three species it's most likely a uh, category of. So we're going to cover that in the next video and uh, go from there. So if you have any questions or anything like that, don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. Code, as always, is provided on my GitHub, and I'll leave a link to that in the description of this video. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.